Hey guys, another special Wednesday video this week, not because I didn't have the same amount of work to do on Wednesdays, but because this article by Peggy Noonan about Donald Trump um, has been making a lot of waves lately, and I've seen almost universal praise for it, and I guess I'm in the minority opinion. I found her article terribly sexist, and part of the continuing reason why if things don't change, we won't see a female president in my lifetime. Why? Well, it's the first paragraph and the last paragraph in this article. Paragraph? Paragraph. It says, the president's primary problem as a leader is not that he is impetuous, brash, or naive. It's not that he is inexperienced, crude, an outsider. It's that he is weak and sniveling. It is that he undermines himself almost daily by ignoring traditional forms and forms of American masculinity. He, she, uh, Peggy Noonan goes on and, and claims that his wife Melania is tougher than Donald Trump is with her stoicism and grace, her self-discipline and desire to show the world respect by presenting herself with dignity. Melania Trump does not have to talk on a regular basis. She doesn't have to have a single opinion. Peggy Noonan is basically saying that Melania greater than Donald because she's pretty and silent. And then at the end, this is important. The way American men used to like seeing themselves, the template they most admired was the strong silent type celebrated in classic mid 20th century films, Gary Cooper, John Wayne, Henry Fonda. In time, the style shifted and we wound up with the nervous and chattery. More than a decade ago, producer and writer David Chase had his Tony Soprano mourn the disappearance of the old style. What they didn't know is once they got Gary Cooper in touch with his feelings, they wouldn't be able to shut him up. The new style was more like that of Woody Allen. His characters couldn't stop talking about their emotions, their resentments, and needs. They were just self-justifying as they acted out their cowardice and anger. And so Peggy Noonan has created a presidential tableau that is inherently masculine. And so a woman, to be president, is going to have to overcome this by hook or by crook in order to become president. And the the great feminist Knuckles the Echidna, or the Echidna, whatever Knuckles is called, is going to explain to you right now why this is wrong. You have the floor, Knuckles. It all comes down to this one penalty kick. Can the young woman break the glass ceiling and prove once and for all that a female can be just as good an athlete as a male? You know, Amy, anytime someone calls attention to the breaking of gender rules, it ultimately undermines the concept of gender equality by implying that this is an exception and not the status quo. Boom! Point for Knuckles. So, Knuckles says you're wrong, Peggy Noonan, and Knuckles says you're actually undermining gender equality. And a video game furry is wiser than Peggy Noonan on this point. Let's break this down. First of all, Peggy Noonan, like many other intelligentsia uh, commentators right now, is missing a fundamental lever of why the public embraced Donald Trump, at least by the narrow, thin margins in certain swing states um, and, and the Democratic blue-collar union wall in Wisconsin, etc., Wisconsin, Michigan, why he penetrated that wall enough to eke out an electoral college victory while losing the popular vote. What do places like Michigan and Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, all those Rust Belt states have in common? Men were uniquely decimated economically by the Great Recession. And so men have essentially been economically emasculated. And now they're being told, be like Gary Cooper and John Wayne and Henry Fonda and quit your bitching. Meanwhile, they look around and see every other identity politics group on the planet just bleeding from the mouth about how hard they have it and how oppressed they have it. And they see, well, you know, possibly in the grand scheme of things, have it pretty good. They have seen a downturn. They themselves are suffering. Their families are suffering. They can't afford to put their kids through school. They lose their houses. They, they want to work, but they can't work. And Donald Trump comes along and he's this embodiment 
of catharsis. And what makes Trump so damn compelling to a particular portion of the population that is being told to shut up white man is he is so rich and so shameless and so brazen and so insulated by his connections to the media and so on. No one can stop him from whining. They see that he has weakness. They see that he is, is plaintive and whining his shrill little cries. What Peggy Noonan and others are missing is that a lot of guys would secretly, they're not going to admit it, but they'd secretly love to be able to have that luxury because everyone else on the planet has it. The problem with Trump isn't that he's sniveling. It isn't that he's unmasculine. It's that he's mean and undisciplined. And that is a very different thing than saying, oh, boo-hoo, poor baby, you got a boo-boo. Well, that's the problem. That is trying to enforce that Gary Cooper, John Wayne, Henry Fonda style of masculinity that, guess what, just didn't work. We know what that style of masculinity leads to in America, a bunch of guys eating a gun. And so this insensitivity, this, this quit your bitchin', which is itself a knock on sort of the feminine state, which is associated with the words plaintive and shrill. I saw that, Peggy Noonan. You're undermining the inherent strength of women by using words associated with the weaker sex to insult the president. And hey, I'm good with insulting the president because he insults. So he set this paradigm. I get that people, people are going to pick that up. That sort of discourse is infectious, but pick the right insults and don't do things that make it harder for people who, you know, are more touchy feely, are connecting to this desire that everybody has to have their emotional needs met. Let's not stop this good progress progress in society that men do have emotions and should be allowed to express them because guess what expressing emotions emotional literacy emotional intelligence is seen as the realm of women and so it's got to be kept out of leadership at all costs because if we go back to you know the industrial age the idea that women were the antithesis of reason was the thinking man's mantra that's why bachelorhood embodied by characters like sherlock holmes was considered a, an ideal state because there were no women around to pull you down from from your perfect embodiment of intellectualism now sherlock holmes was uh, an emotional wreck in a lot of ways. He suffered from melancholy, aka depression, but somehow that was still okay because there are no women around to get overly emotional on the guy's ass. Just Dr. Watson, who basically fulfilled the same role, and the slash fiction ensued. Just by being women, we are disqualified if a qualifying requirement is that we be perfect embodiments of masculinity that doesn't help men because it's unnatural that doesn't help women because it's something we can never be and that doesn't help people who identify as neither because oh my god that whole debate has just gone so far off the rails that trump successfully leveraged it to make everybody go crazy and get people talking about anything other than the story state of you know everything don't be fooled and don't be fooled by articles like this that select the right idea that Trump is weak on many instances. But if Trump actually embraced his more sensitive side, which I think he spends a lot of time covering up, he would be able to be a president more in the, role, the mold of very popular presidents like Bill Clinton or, and Barack Obama, who hug people and come across as more cuddly and can be playful and impish and don't have to be the tough guy thug every second isn't he so sensitive doesn't he just defy masculine gender expectations in all the right ways isn't he dreamy this is no better in advancing women but it'd be a lot better 
for Trump's agenda. So don't think for a second that the problem is that our president is currently feminized, because... Anytime someone calls attention to the breaking of gender rules, it ultimately undermines the concept of gender equality by implying that this is an exception and not the status quo. What? Just because I'm a meathead doesn't mean I'm not a feminist.